Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Nitty Digit Podcast. I am your host, Jay, uh, on Ravelry. My name is Knitterly Book Lady. Today, today is Saturday, October 10th, 2015, and it has been a pretty long time. I think this is the first time podcasting on my new camera, and I meant to podcast much earlier, but then life happened, and I am not going to apologize for that, for that, because it's just life, so. <laughs> All right, but I have a lot of stuff to show you, and I'm so excited to show it to you. So, first off, what is off my needles? And if you follow me on Instagram, most of these are not, um... They're not a surprise. So first off, my much do about nothing socks are, let me show you the other one. Ta-da! They're done. Usual, my usual vanilla sock with the fish lip kiss heel. Um, and I did what I'm doing to help with the cuff not being so uh, unruly because I've been I've been obsessed. Oh, hi, Teddy. Um, I've been obsessed with doing toe-up socks, and I, I'm not sure if you noticed. So I, but the one thing that aggravated me was the cuff, because when I kept with my US ones, because normally with my vanilla socks, I do US ones um, on my Ch Chow Gu lace uh, needles, because I love them. And Someone at the yarn store suggested to me, um, one of the gals that works there, um, she said, use you as zeros. Go down one size and then um, bind off that way and do, of course, the Jenny's, Jenny stretchy bind off. Well, I learned that I'm not, I'm, I didn't really like the Jenny's uh, stretchy bind off only because it uses more yarn than I would like and it's more, it's fiddly for me, but I I think it'll be fine. Um, I think it's good for other people, but for me, I, I, I don't like it. Um, so I kept with the US Zeros for this one. Um, it's a twisted rib. And if you can kind of see. Yay! Autofocus is your friend. Um, kept with the Zeros, did it for an inch, and then did my usual Russian bind off. And it's not as curly or as unflappy. So I have worn these so you can see kind of the wear. And also because I have a cat now, I have cat hair. So these are done. I finished these back in September. No, late August. Excuse me, late August. So I finished these about a month or so, and I wore them a couple of times. It's still not cold enough, sadly, to wear socks. So not there yet. Um, and they turned out to be matchy, almost matchy, matchy. Um, let me, you know, not hide the good stuff. These turned out to be almost matchy, matchy, which I don't try. I really don't. So, but it was only a two-stripe soccer. So, and then after that, I cast it on two pairs of socks because I wanted to, and I finished these last week for the start of so Socktober. Yes, October, and I finished these. Oh, excuse me. Before I show you that. Those socks were done on my US 1 and US 0, as I said, um, and this was, the yarn is um, Canon Hand Dyes, and it's her Lewis MC and Twist, so it has some cashmere in it, self striping, and it's her Much Ado About Nothing, and the quote from it is, I know we shall have reveling tonight. Don't you love that Christmas autofocus? Canon hand eyes right here. Oh, there you go. Oh, you know how much it is. So, that was that. And I have this much yarn left, so 
I could have done a lot more on the cuff, but I'm not big on long cuffs. So the next one, next sock that I finished, I had cast it on after, and one of the socks that I cast it on, and finished promptly for Socktober. Socktober! Is Purple Goddess, and this is called The Ginger is a Clever One. Let me get it in frame here. And these ones are matchy matchy. And now you can see kind of the cuff being kind of flippity flap. Um, and that is because, so I don't know why I wanted these to matchy match. It just, I really wanted to see if I could. It turns out I can. They're not truly matchy matchy, if you can kind of tell. But they're almost there. And so the the stripes are half an inch. So I wanted the cuffs to be the purple. So they're only an inch, and I think that's why they're kind of, if you can kind of see. I'm going to try blocking them, because I usually don't normally block my socks before I wear them. So, but they almost match. If I can just get them in frame. So they kind of match. Kind of, kind of. It's just the top part. This one has more, this, ha this one has more orange than this one. So... And this on, if you can see where I joined for the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, is a little bit of the purple. I'm not trying to flip you off, sorry. So, um, yeah, these were fun. These were exciting. Again, my usual vanilla sock pattern, US1 and then US0 for the cuff. Um, and I think it's just because it's only half an inch rather than an inch that it's kind of whatnot and this is how much yarn I had left. I can't find the tag worth a life of me so I don't know where it went and this is how much yarn I had left. <sighs> maybe it's in here? No I think maybe I lost it. Meh. Um, it's her stuff it, stuff a sock in it base so it's just basic superwash merino and nylon and it's still nice and cushy and soft. And I have not worn these yet. So, yay! But wait, there's more! <laughs> One more. Um, I think, no, I know that I was knitting the Liesel. And I had separated for the sleeves, and I was just working on the rest of the body. Well, guess what? I finished. So, there you go. Um, I blocked it. Um, I'm already wearing a cardigan. You know what? I'm gonna wear it. It's hot. It's only gonna last for a minute, so watch me as I undress. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm trying to make sure the cat's the cat's on the floor now. Hey Ted. Hi Ted. What you doing? All right. Okay. You get to see me undress. Alright. So, here's... Oh, I thought I blocked that out. I thought I blocked it out, but okay. So you can kind of see here. So the neckline... Oh, I did. Okay, good. Um, and you can see I did my usual three-quarter sleeves because I love my three-quarter sleeves. Because um, I roll them up anyway. I'm there is. I thought I got rid of them. I blocked it. So I, I think I'm going to attach a button here and just loop it in with one of the lacy stuff and just do it like this. And if you can see, um, let's see if I can. I can't really see. But you can kind of see my how long it is. It's pretty long, which is what I wanted, and it's very nice and flowy and drapey, which is what I wanted as well. So, I'm happy. I'm very happy with this pattern. It's just, it's too warm to wear it, so off it goes. Woohoo! I know, Teddy, why am I strip teasing for my people? I know. What's wrong with me? Ugh. Okay. Okay. Hi! <laughs> Let me put my clothes back on. 
Okay. My big long guardian. La da 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 da. And this won't be edited because I'm lazy. Hi. Let me roll up my sleeves. Because again, I like three quarter sleeves. And any cardigan, anything that I have that's long sleeves, I roll up. I just don't like stuff near my near my wrist. I used to not. I used to be very much over the hands and whatnot, but not anymore. But anyway, so that's my Liesel. It was done on US 8. 8. Yes. No. 10? Either US 8 or US 10. It was my signature needles. No, it wasn't a 10. It was an 8. Yes, it was an 8. It was a US 8 signature needles, and I did it with Malabrigo worsted in the pink frost colorway. I cannot seem to find the tag or the yarn, so it's somewhere in here. So, and I have a skein and a half left. So I need to figure out what to do with that stuff or just give it away because I'm not a big worsted fan. I mean, I love knitting with this, with the yarn in the sweater, but because of where I live, it's just, it's not practical to have worsted stuff. It really, especially for sweaters, I really honestly think that our neighbor, our, where I live in Livermore, it's just too hot. It, even in the winter, you know. So, and that is it for finished objects. I am still working on my featherweights cardigan. It is living in my Erin Lane Doctor Who bag. One of the Doctor Who bag club, which I just got another one. But I'm going to keep it until next time, just in case people haven't gotten theirs yet. And if you haven't gotten yours and you haven't been looking around, the reason why there was a delay was because of supposedly fabric. She, was, she wasn't able to get the fabric. Um, okay, so I believe the last time you saw this was before I was still on the yoke. Well, I have since then breezed through and I have separated for the sleeves. And I am now on the body. So I was probably around here. Yeah, just about right here. So you have to see it, huh? Right, right. So the, here's the yoke. You can kind of see. And I was, and this is the collar. And this is the sleeve part. So I was around here. So now I have divided for the sleeves. There you go. I'm still learning my camera. And here, here I'll show you the other side. So I messed up at almost at the end of the yoke part. My marker got, and this is where I think I need to get more square like markers because my circle stitch markers were, it was actually jumping. So when I would increase, it was the wrong place to increase. So there's one part where it's off. Oh, this is the wrong side. It's, it is, yeah. So if you can kind of see, you can kind of see where it, yeah. So right here. So meh, it still worked. I still had the right stitches, so it just means the shaping here is not as good as it could be. Um, but I found where it should have been and, and was able to fix it at the end. So, and I think I was off by one stitch. I mean, off for, from the shaping. Um, and I was going through, but of course it's lace weight, so it's going to take forever. And it's stocking it stitch. So... I am right here and I want this to be longer than 10 inches so for my size it has to go to 10 inches I'm gonna go for more than that um because I like my cardigans to be long and 
comfy. So I'm gonna gonna keep knitting for that, but it's doing very well. I am so the dirty details. This is the featherweight cardigan by Heather Heather Hannah Fedick. It is a paid for pattern. Um, I am doing these doing this project on US fives on my uh, Knitters Pride carbons. And the yarn, the pretty, pretty gray yarn, is Tosh Lace, Madeline Tosh Tosh Lace, in steamer trunk. There you go. There you go. All right. So that is what I'm, I... But I have put this to the side because it's October. And as a sock knitter, how can I not knit socks during Socktober? Which I keep wanting to say Socktober. I don't know why. I do know why, but yeah. So there you have it. So you probably won't see much progress of this unless I go through another month not podcasting. But I'm putting this lovely thing to the side so I can start knitting socks, which comes to, if I could get all of this project in the bag, eh, um, is... My other pair of socks, which you have not seen. So, first off, this is a half complete object, so there's a hole. Which, if I can pull, I don't have enough sock blockers, unfortunately. So, here you go. So, I decided I'm tired of the vanilla sock, so I'm going to start adventuring out and looking for more. Uh, sock patterns that go for self-striping. Um, so this one is called Georgia on My Mind um, by Leslie from the Knit, Knit Girls podcast. And so it's a seats of panel. It's a free pattern, so I'm not giving much away. But here's the here's the hoe. And I only did a four and a half cuff um, with one and a half inch ribbing. And of course, I have teeny tiny, teeny tiny, teeny tiny feet. And I am this close, this close to finishing the second pair of socks. I, last night I was like, I am going to finish this sock. I'm going to stay up late. I'm going to do it. I'm going to finish this sock for my podcast. I fell asleep at midnight. No, one o'clock in the morning. Oh, the days. So, oh, and so the pattern calls for mirroring. I, I completely forgot to do it. So this is just going to be the same. <laughs> so I finished the usual heel flap, which I've been doing fish lips because the fish lips, the the fish lips kiss heel for a good amount of time that I completely forgot how much longer it takes to do the heel flap and I was just like ah, must not die must not go crazy so <laughs> I don't think I'll be doing heel flaps anymore or if I don't know maybe I will maybe I'll go back I'm in I go through phases so I am I have a few more inches until I get to the toe. So I'll be doing that for the rest of the day. So I can finish another pair for Socktober. Or Socktober. Because I'm crazy. Are we at all surprised? So there you go. The dirty details is it is the pattern is Georgia on my mind by Leslie Thompson. I believe that's her last name from the Knit Girls podcast. It is a free pattern. I am knitting them up on the smaller size on US 1s. Just US 1s, not going down to US 0s because this was 
top down. And the and the yarn is Patton's Croy stripes. So it's this. Mm -hmm. Show the show the picture, Jay. So this is the Croy socks, and this is the stripe one. Which why are you not focusing? There you go. Four ply. I only had two, and it's very small. So here's the dirty details. This is called Spring Leaf Stripes. And this is a very nice, hard-working yarn. It really is. Um, I've knit a couple of these for the P, and he loves them. But I did not buy enough for him, because he requires three skeins of these, and I only bought two of all the colors. So this is what I have left. Um, I tried to see if I could knit more and get more out of the skeins, but I was getting nervous about how much yarn I had in the first sock, so. Um, but again, I still have a few more inches to go for my foot and then the, and then the toe, so there's actually going to be less than this. So I used a good amount, but I could have done more. I could have done more. That's why I went to a four and a half cup because I was scared of how much yarn, so. But there you go. I sh I'm going to be finished with these tonight. Hopefully. We'll see. I'm watching a lot of Supernatural. and But today, I had to get my dress fitted. So, <laughs> my wedding dress fitted. I'm just, I'm just not fitting just a random dress. My, my wedding dress. So, that comes first. Maybe. Anyway, um, but so after this sock, what is coming up the pipeline in my, it's like an Aaron Lane bag time, but this was the one that's closest to Halloween and I have been, I have been seeing all the pretty Halloween-y October project bags and wanting them so bad, but can't. So this is my. Reconciliation. This is close to Halloween. The skulls and the hearts. So, I am going to cast on this. And I'm going to skein it up before I start. This is Felici Knit Picks in their Rustic Cabin Self Striping. This you cannot find anywhere anymore because they stopped dyeing it. But, but. Sometimes they will randomly say, we've dyed some, and they have a flash sale. And this is how I got this one, was um, through a flash sale. I got a whole box of it. Let's see. So I decided I wanted to knit this because it's uh, very close to autumnal colors. So there you go. I'm going to knit this in my butt, and I'm going to do toe-up socks, so it's going to be US 1s US ones, and US 0s, but I'm going to do the vanilla bean pattern, uh, which is a free pattern on Ravelry, and it's just, it's going to cut the monotony, which I like. Um, the other socks that I have not pulled out yet, but I am going to cast on once, um, I'm done knitting the socks that I cast it on the end of August, um, are the blueberry waffles, and I have some blue wool mizza that I'm going to, uh, wind up, cake up, and actually, you know what? I've gotten up already. Might as well grab it for you. I forgot to grab it, so, again, I'll be back. Hi, Tedsters! I know. Where's my wool mizza? Where did I put the wool mizza, dear? Ah, this is where I put no, not that way. This one. All right. Oh. Excuse me, Teddy. Teddy's over there. All right. So my yarn stash is right over there, if you haven't noticed. And I went through a huge reorganization, which I'll talk about later. <laughs> but I'm going to knit the blueberry waffle in, of course, blue. Um, this was given to me by a friend long time ago for a birthday and it's twin my old blue jeans and I bought some more wool miser, um a month ago from the loopy you and um 
I realized I should really knit up more on my wool muslin. So that's what I'll be doing. So that is that. All right. I've talked a lot about knitting. So what's next? Nails. So I'm going to talk, but I'm not really going to show because you've probably already seen it. So as you can tell, or maybe you can't tell, I've gone back to acrylics and I've gone back to going to a salon to do my nails. I lost my nail mojo. I, I know, I know. I just, I, I just like being pampered and I'm not going to apologize for it. And so, and that was one of, again, one of the reasons why I was hesitant about podcasting because I know what makes my podcast different than the others is because I talk about my nails and my nail art and I haven't done it as much and when I did I wasn't proud of it I just wasn't happy with it and it was more frustrating than making me happy and I'm in the belief that I need to be happy so I'd rather be happy with what is you know, someone else is doing for me than being unhappy with my nails and constantly obsessing about it and constantly unhappy and frustrated and anxious, if that makes sense. I, I realize I'm an anxious, I'm an anxiety junkie. I like the feeling of anxiety, which is not good in the end. So we're working on that. So I decided to, you know what, I'm going to let someone else do my nails and let them do be artistic but I'm just going to let them do it and not I mean I I'm actually to the point where I may even give away not many a polish because I acquired that over years and I still love my nail polish and I still prefer them over the salon stuff oh yeah no but I think um, like stamping, I bought all these materials for stamping and what not to do it on my own. And I just, it's too anxiety ridden for me. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm chicken, but every, there's only been one time, one time where stamping went well for me. Every other time it's always smeared or partial image. And I've done all the tricks. Maybe just, it's too hot. Maybe I can do it in the winter because I had, I had these ideas for my wedding nails. Yes, I have been thinking about my wedding nails. I actually have not been thinking about my hair, not about my makeup, but how my nails are going to look for the wedding. Yes, I know. I know! What's wrong with me? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with me. I just, I prefer my nails looking good. <laughs> So that's why I got a lot more stamping plates and I was I was going to do this lacy thing with a nice blue gel polish that has a hint of red, which is the colors of the wedding. And I was just going to be all like, yeah. And then I started practicing and I started playing around and I realized I suck at this. And I know practice makes perfect, and I know that I could probably do it well, but it's not my priority. I have other prior I have other things that I need to do that are more priority. So I I'm sorry. I'm I'm not the nail I am not the nail lady that used to be. I just my priorities have changed so much and I, I'm still involved in the nail forum that I on Ravelry, but not as much. And I just, and I covet people stamping nails and I covet all the pretty, pretty indie, in indie, not indie dyers, but indie nail polish people. And I just, I can't, I actually, when I look on Etsy now, it used to be I would look at indie nail polish and be like, ooh, pretty, or go on um, Color Me Nails and all those and be like, ooh, pretty, and now I'm like, meh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm no more of a nail 
meal person. But I still like having nice meals. So, um, if you are fine with it, I will be showing what other people do for me um, with my ideas. And if you're just bored, I, well, meh. This is my party and, and I'll show my non-nail art if I want to. <laughs> I am not going to apologize because... Basically, I'm talking to a camera. I, I don't think many people watch this, so I'm just going to do it because I'm having fun. So, all right. So, this is what the lady did for me, and I really love, I found this, this new salon. So, it was always open when I moved here, but when I went there, when I was exploring new nail salons, because I, I always get pedicures done by other people. That I can't, I can't reach down there. I just can't. So when I was going and looking for new new nail salons, I tried this one closer to my house, um, and the lady was rude, and she put on acrylics that were extremely thick, and I could rip them off. Like, they didn't stick. They were awful. So um, I stopped going there, and she was just rude. And whenever I said, and I like my nails short because I type, that's, you know, I knit. I don't like not being able to knit because my nails are too long to, and then you hear the, hear that? Okay, I'll stop. So, and I kept saying, I want them short. And the lady would be like, no, 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 you're weird. So I said, fine, I'm just going to no longer going there. So I finally, I finally found a place a little bit further away, but not as far away. Um, and they did my acrylics, but they still did it thick, but at least they cut it short enough that I could, you know, yeah. But they were still thick. I mean, it didn't feel as good, but it was fine. So, and their pedicures were amazing, so... I was just like, fine. But the place near my house uh, changed ownership. And I saw the sign and I said, oh, really? Ooh, maybe they're nicer. So I went, I went in, it was their first week and their <laughs> credit card machine wasn't working. Some chairs weren't as good, but they were kind. And the woman was like, Oh, you like them short? Sure, you can even come in and have them shorten without having to pay anything. I said, what? Wait, wait, what? 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 Really? She did not want to, she, this woman is just amazing. Her name was, her name is Donna and I love her. I mean, of course she charges me for the acrylics and she charges me for the pedicure and their pedicures. Oh my gosh. So you have a choice of deluxe, means, excuse me, basic, which is just basic, basic. But their basic still includes a nice massage. Um, and just a quick um, exfoliation. Then you have the extra one, which includes like a little mask. And then there's deluxe, which has the mask, the scrub, the callus remover, the massage, everything. So I always get the deluxe. I know it's my treat of the month. And, um, and she's great. She's so apparently because I did my review on Yelp and put pictures up, they have been getting a lot of business and a lot of positive feedback because they're great people. They are kind. They are always willing to do what you want they're willing as long as you tell them what you want. So um, when I went back to acrylics, I told her exactly what I wanted. I wanted, you know, I don't, I don't want them thick because I want them to look simple. I want, I just like the extra strength um, because my nails, I, I tried all these treatments and they still were thin. I stopped using gel and was, you know, nurturing, lotioning, everything, they were still thin. I think it's just genetics and also um, other stuff. So 
um, she she does a thin, like as thin as you can for acrylic. I mean, you can kind of see that they're. I wonder. There. Oh, there you go. So, I mean, they're not like this part. I kind of messed up this one, these ones. So, the original ones that I had were just white tips, and they were beautiful and not as and not as yucky. This, so when I went back to get a fill, I wanted black tips. These turned out to be more eggplant, and so I tried to fix it, and I fixed it badly. And I put an extra coat of gel top coat, and it just wasn't good. So these are bad because of me, not. But I like the shape of them. They're nice and simple and straight, and with some rounded edges, and they're short. So, and this is a week worth, because I got them last week. And see the sparkle? Sparkle! Here, let me show you. A... Okay, so it focuses when I go up high. No, there you go. And I wish the sun could come to show. There's actually a little bit of hollow in the silver part of the black tip. Or dark purple tip. So I put a little bit of Bella's Vampire, which is a gelish color on there. Um, but I think next time, depending on the timing, I'm going to get orange tips. I just like the natural. I, I went with white tip first because I was doing something that required me not to have nail polish. So, oops. I'm still, again, still getting used. But I really like the shape of them. And I really like how they feel on my nails. And I'm able to knit. So, there you go. Ooh, I can do this. Oh, or not. Or not. I like the thumb. Come to me. There you go. So that's my nails right now. Um, depending on the time, I usually can get them done, depending on how short, um, two to three weeks. And this is the first week. So next weekend, depending if it's too long, I may do them. If they're still good enough, I'm going to go one more week. Because that's really what I base it on. I don't really care about gaps as much since it's clear. But I care about, you know, being able to type. So, <laughs> I already showed you this. So, all right. So, that's nails. Books. I was going to look up where I was last. So, I believe I was reading The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Finished it. Was Fabulous. The next book I read was called uh, Sarah Waters' The Paying Guests. And that was for book club. And I was also listening to the last book of Dr The Dresden Files, um, which is... I can't remember. It was Ghost Story. Then after that, it was... Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. And I'm not pulling out my phone. I refuse to pull out my phone and be rude like that. But it was the last, the latest book in, in the Dresden Files. I was listening to that. Well, I finished that one. It was fabulous. Um, and I painfully finished The Paying Guest by Sarah Waters. Don't read it. Just, no. No. Two thumbs down. Yeah. Um, I do love Sarah Waters' writing, um, but I, this wasn't a good one. It just, meh. I had meh feelings about it. And so after that, I was trying to start the next one in the book club. And I don't know, we've been, we've been striking out on our book choices lately. It was, I don't even remember the title of the book, and I bought it on my Kindle. It was only $10. Tried reading it, 
fail. Just like, I don't care. So I'm just going to scrap that. Just say, Meh, not reading it anymore. And I'm going to read something nice and fluffy, which I haven't decided yet. I'm trying to decide if I want to read something by Rachel Heron or try Debbie McComer, which is the first book in her knitting book series. So we'll see about that, depending on how I feel. So, and I'm listening to Station Eleven by Emily, Emily something, hold on, sorry, pulling it out. Oh, okay. In a few minutes, you are going to hear my fiance coming and his brother. So I'm going to have to close the door. Hold on. Sorry, Teddy, you're going to be stuck in here. Okay. Sorry. It's a good thing I checked my phone. Jeez. Um, sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I'm looking up a book for you. It's Emily something. And I want to give it, get it right to you. Station 11 by Emily St. John Mandel. You book detail so you can see. So, here you go. Ah, come on, focus. Is it because it's a book? I mean, not a book. Um, focus. No? Okay. Well, it's Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mendel, and it's read by Kirsten Potter, if you want to do the, um, do the audible. It is very good. Skin Games! Skin Games was the last dressing book. So, uh, I just started that. Um, I just started that, so I'm, I'm actually only a few minutes in, so there's nothing much to report. It... It took me a while to finish the Dresden Files and then start a new Audible book because um, I've been changing up my routine at work. I decided um, to listen to classical musics, musics, <laughs> music while working and then listening to podcasts and and um, my book while driving. So. So I, I, I've lessened my listening time as much because of that fact. So that is what's going on with my reading. What is next? Um, I've purchased a lot of yarn. I'm not going to show it to you. <laughs> because I, I, I did. I, I forgot to pull it out and it's too late. Teddy, you can't get out now. Sorry, girl. I think she hears, I think Peter, Peter just came in, so, um, so yeah, but I bought some Wilmiza, I finally bought some Fiber Nymph in autumnal colors, and I got a lot of yarn when I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which leads me to, um, etc, 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 so, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> I'm not going to detail everything that has happened in the last few months because it's just, it was a lot. It really was a lot. Um, my life exploded and it was coming for a while now. And I, I think you heard a little bit, I, I was telling you that the doctor's my new doctor realized and the rheumatologist confirmed that I don't have fibromyalgia. Um, I just, I don't have the symptoms that should be and yeah. So what it turns out it was, it is, is it, the, the, the big long name is called inflammatory spondylitis with degenerative joint disease. In layman's terms, I have arthritis in my back and 
uh, what I call my what I call hips because I'm so small not small but short and so you can't see where but okay so I have right here so actually closer to my groin area so right here through here up here and same on the other side through here but it's actually worse in this side get to see my lady rolls more than once so um yeah we did an mri we did an MRI. Sorry, I'm making sure the cat's okay. Um, we did an MRI. We did x-rays. And it's not... So, as a 31-year-old, you wouldn't think that someone would develop arthritis so quickly. Um, because our... As the chronic pain doctor told me recently, he was saying that... Uh, we're all going to have arthritis at the end because it's just with the wear and tear of our joints, it's just going to happen. Degeneration is going to happen. Um, but the reason why sometimes it happens so quickly with younger people, um, it's not, it's, it's not rare, but it is not common. And, but I'm not special in any way. Like the, 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 the pain doctor was telling me very specifically, you're not special, <laughs> which I'm like, thanks. It, it, but it's better to know that you're not special. Honestly, you don't want to be special when it comes to this. The reason why some young people get arthritis, um, especially in the back is because of injuries. What? Oh, she is flopping over here. She's crying over here. I can't let you out now. Oh, I know. Okay. I know, honey. You want to go out? Okay. I got to let her out. Hold on. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Out you go. Go out. Thank you. I don't know if you heard that. So, it's... It's not common, but it's not rare. That was what I was trying to say. So, um, and I, and we don't know how I got it. I, I think it's because, um, I'm very hard. I was very hard on my body when I was younger. And when I was working as a label technician, um, at a company that, put on RFID tags in libraries, I was not very good with my body. And I bent wrong all the time. And I used to take big, so I take rows of books, pile them all on my station and just, yeah. And I, I really, and I was on my feet for eight hours and I really think that's what happened. And, um, and it, it also, I did a lot of physical labor when I was younger that I, you know, and I hate to say this because I am a feminist, but women's bodies are a little bit different than men. And I don't, especially for my body, my body specifically, I don't think I was meant to do as much physical labor as I was doing. I was lifting a lot of heavy things when I was younger. So, um, yeah, so, and I hear my future husband coming in with his brother. I really hope they can't hear me. Embarrassing. So, yeah, so I've been dealing with that and trying to deal with the, we're, we're working on what will be best for my medication levels, um, what to take and how to handle flare-ups and how, so my, my goals, as the chronic, as my pain doctor was telling me, was manage pain. I, I was taking this medication called meloxicam. Um, it didn't work. It, it helped with the inflammation. So I, so the arthritis, there's, there's usual, you know, degeneration, but mine comes with inflammation as well. 
I don't ask me. I don't know if it goes hand in hand. I don't know. But it was helping with inflammation, but it was not helping for the pain. So um, I went back to doing a leave, but I, I started doing a lot more a leave, and then I realized, oh, I'm only supposed to do 440 milligrams a day. So I've been taking, yeah, but anyway. So I'm taking that. I'm also, I need, I was told again to keep with the weight loss. I've lost 10 pounds. So <laughs> I just need to keep going, but I've been, I've been naughty the last few days. I know it, I, when I'm stressed, I eat. So, but I've been keeping up. I've been eating salads most, most times. Um, and keeping up with keeping my blood sugar low, um, and etc. And I was told I need to strengthen my core because, because of the fact that I have pain in my back, I've been recompensating by using different muscles. And there's parts of the muscle that is now tight, too tight, and that's what causes more of the pain. So I had to start doing exercises to strengthen my core, which means I'm going to physical therapy, which I was going to physical therapy, but they were treating my back and neck, which turns out I wasn't that bad. It was my back. So, yeah. But this all accumulated to me ending up in the hospital. Yeah. I was in the hospital for a day. Um, because with pain, I mean, I'm just going to admit it here, with pain comes mental breakdown. And I I mentally broke down. I'm gonna admit it. I mentally broke down, so I was in. I was in the hospital for a day, trying to convince them to get out, because <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. But I. That's where I realize I'm an anxiety junkie, because I was anxious a lot and um, depressed a lot. Um, and I'm finally getting it treated. And I'm talking more about this, even though, I mean, I know some people are just like, oh, I don't need to know this TMI, but I think we need to talk more about mental illness and talking about being human. And this is what it was, I was being human. Um, when you deal with pain every day and then dealing with stressful factors as well in other parts of life, organizing a wedding, um, work, it, it accumulates dealing with other stressors. It, that's life. So, um, yeah, I, so I'm, I'm handling it. I've been, I've been put on more medication, <laughs> um, Zoloft, and working on that. Um, but it, 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 it has helped a lot with the anxiety. And, and that's why I moved to a, not avoiding, but just recognizing certain things that cause me anxiety and cause me to not enjoy life, and I rather enjoy life than being anxious, and, and that's why I'm choosing to do what I'm doing with my nails, because I'm happier when I get acrylics and I have someone else do it than my f not liking it, and always having to redo it, and just not, you know, sometimes staying up until three o'clock in the morning because your nails are not perfect, and I just, Zoloff has killed my nail mojo. How about that? Yeah, there you go. But I'm happier. So, and I'm managing the pain. And I'm taking steps towards new things in life. Um, and getting more excited about my wedding. Which leads me to happier to topics, which is the wedding. Um... We had our tasting a few weekends ago, and we chosen what we're serving. We are serving beef wellington, salmon and scallops, and grilled portobello. 
delicious. Oh, I'm so excited. I already know what I'm having. And um, we did a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff done for the wedding. Planned out the linens that are going to be on the table. Figured out the centerpieces. Figured out the flowers. Um, spoke with the makeup and hair people down in the lodge, which I still need a contract from them. I need to poke them. I'll, I'll have to put that in my reminders. Um, so got that done. Um, and now after I podcast, I am going to try on my dress so it can be pretty and fit. Um, and then, and I already have my shoes. So yeah, everything's coming together and it's less than 90 days until my wedding. It's like 70 some days. I'm so excited. Um, we still have a lot to do though, so. But our person got ordained. Yay! And um, the P just has to, um, he has to write the ceremony for him. We have, I have to write my vows. He has to get his tux, which I have been bugging him. He's like, I'll just get it the weekend before. He, I told him, get it at least a month in advance. Because he, he at first he was going to buy. Then he's like, no, I'm going to rent. I'm like, okay, rent. But you need, it still needs to be fitted. And then what if your tux is not there? And he's like, mm, good boys are boys. Boys are boys. So he's going to, I'm going to keep pestering him. Or nagging. Whichever word you want to, want me to use, I'm going to use it. So. I got a haircut. I know. Why did I get my hair cut short for the wedding? I was trying to grow it. And then I got frustrated with it. I just did not like it. So I have a different idea. And my veil is going to be pretty. So I got my veil too. I'm excited. Um, what else about the wedding? We sent out the invitations. Um last weekend. So people are getting them ever so slowly. They need to send us our, their RSVPs with their meal choices. And that was fun, trying to print every single guest. So the wedding is very small, and I want it to be small. And we are specifically inviting specific people. We don't want plus ones, which I'm allowed to do because I'm the bride. So in order to make it crystal clear, we made the RSVP cards specifically named for that person. So if it was couples though, we had to include two. But it got done. Yay! So invitations are done. So now we just need to organize everything else. But um bump. So that's going well. Um and I think, what else? Events that are coming up. Um, next Friday is our second year anniversary. So Friday after work, when I'm done, um, we're going to go to where we had our first date, which is the anniversary that we were talking about. Because technically, so we first met October 16th. That was our first date. But we didn't become an official couple until November 1st. So, I don't count that. I know. There's too many anniversaries. I'm just going to deal with two. One when we had our first date and one when we got married. So, there you go. I'm hoping you can't hear that. So, there you go. So, yeah, we have our... So, we're going... For that meal, for that, and then the next day we're gonna go to the Half Moon Bay Pumpkin Festival, which is our new tradition that we do. So last year we did it and we loved it. Um, and I went to the Pumpkin Festival when we first met, um, just by myself uh, with some friends, and I just really wanted to show him, and he really loved it. So this year we're doing it again, and we're gonna ha we're gonna eat at the Half Moon Bay Brewery Company and have the best delicious soup delicious clam chowder soup and delicious fried calamari so i'm excited about that or i may get the pumpkin soup we'll see 
Um, and then another event that's coming up is Dickens Fair. Um, we're going to go the Friday after Thanksgiving, which I'm... Since we're not going to have people over, I don't think. My parents are in the middle of their own big project and we won't have an everyone else has their own plans so I I don't know if I really want to cook a big meal so we're trying to decide what we're gonna do so my hair is being weird but oh well so we'll see um and then that Friday after we're gonna do Dickens Fair which I believe I've talked about non-stop last year and was so excited and was I don't think I talked about it in the podcast because I wasn't podcasting but the the year before so um I love the Dickens Fair it's my favorite event and um I have a I have a friend that gets involved and I love seeing her do her thing um and apparently another friend is doing it this year which is awesome so that's fun um, what else? And that's it for events. Um, shows. And then I'll wrap it up because it's past an hour. Um, because I've been getting up and down, so I'm not sorry. <laughs> Just had to do it. Um, I've been watching Supernatural. I've been catching up on Netflix, and oh my gosh. So the first season I was like, eh, okay, all right, I'll just keep watching it. It looks interesting. I like, I like Jensen Ackles. I used to watch him when he was on Days of Our Lives. I had the biggest crush on him. Sam, which is Dean from Gilmore Girls. So for the longest time I kept saying, Dean, wait, no. Jared Padalecki. I don't like him as much. I didn't like him in Gilmore Girls still think he's whiny and supernatural but but once the second season started I was like yes oh my god so I've been knitting constantly and watching supernatural I just finished the fifth season this morning so once I'm done and I'm trying on my dress I'll be watching more of that um and I'm so excited that new sh the fall season has started for shows watch my usual sus Specs, um, stopped watching NCIS. I it it just got boring. It's the same storyline, so I I stopped. Um, and then I'm giving The Good Wife one more episode. And if it's not, if it doesn't thrill me, I'm just gonna stop. Just accept the fact. Eh, I'm done. Um, and I we've been watching The Muppets, and oh my gosh, I love them. I love Muppets. I hope it keeps goes stays. Um, Gotham is still going strong and loving it. Um, what else? What other new show? Oh, Heroes Reborn. So, I wasn't expecting much because at the end of Heroes, the, the actual, the Heroes main one, it ended lackluster and I knew it was going to can't be canceled and I was just like, okay, fine, we'll just let it be canceled. But when Heroes Reborn came around, I'm like, okay. I, I, I'll try it. So, so the P and I just tried it and ended up loving it. I just, it's, it's, it's actually really good. It's, it's like the first season. So we're keeping that on the, on the tube. Um, and I think that's it on new shows, though, because I, I'm i scared to try on new shows lately because of Fox. Because I loved, I loved um, Almost Human. The the one with um, Michael Ely and um, the other guy. Why am I missing his name? Um, starts with Kurt, I think? I don't remember. I loved it. And they canceled it. And I'm just like, oh. So I'm always hesitant about trying new shows, especially on Fox. I'm so happy that they continue Gotham because, oh my gosh, if they didn't continue Gotham, oh, <laughs> no. So, um, yeah. So that's shows, and my ring is falling off. Um, I think I've told you everything else. It is past an hour, and oh my gosh. I hope you like the new camera. Um, I'm loving it. It's great. 
Um, in regards to scheduling, I know it's just half haphazard. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm now that everything has cooled down with. Well, I keep saying that, but has life ever cooled down? No. So. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna try my best. I I think the most that I think I can do, especially since the wedding is coming up in December, of maybe doing once a month until I can get, once everything cools down. I also have a super secret project going on right now that I can't talk about until things are final. Um, that is gonna take up much of my time. Um, so just trying to decide on that. Um, so I'm going to try to podcast once a month. Um, but if, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And honestly, it's just me talking to the camera, venting, honestly, <laughs> just venting and saying, look at my pretty things. So I do it for me. I don't do it for anyone else. So, and I'm, this is how it rolls. So anyway. I'm going to end it now because I'm now just blathering. If you want to follow me uh, outside of the podcast, you can find me on Instagram only as jcraftygeek. Um, you can also find me on Ravelry. I'm mostly hanging out at, at the TFMIP forum. There's there's fiber in my, sta in my polish, um, mostly, and my... Screen name is, is Knitterly Book Lady, and you can find this on YouTube and YouTube only. But I post, I also try to post a, a, a thread saying it's up. Um, and I was good, and the blog should be updated, and I'll update that once the, once the podcast is up. Also, and I completely forgot to tell you this. So, I've decided that I'm also going to open up a Socktober thread. If you want to join me, go right on ahead because it's Socktober. So if you want to join me, that's fine. It's probably just going to be me posting all the pictures of my socks, which is fine. So join me in the Socktober thread. And you can find that on the Nutty Digits uh, forum in the group on Ravelry and it's just the Nitty Digits Nitty Digits podcast so it's quiet I, I, I'm not in there as much because there's not much activity going on so meh it's quiet anyway you guys have a great month great time enjoy the lovely lovely fall weather that we don't have in Livermore, California, where it's 90 degrees. I hate it. Wherever you are, enjoy the turning of the leaves. And hopefully, and most likely, you will. I will see you soon. You have a great day. Have a great nitty digit day. Bye.